Since the beginning of time, man has wanted to fly, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. But over time, we have found many ways to defy the laws of gravity. It's just the ultimate sport. It's just a good, nice, natural high. It's the wind, it's the waves, it's the surf, it's the water. It makes you want to go higher and faster. And, and the flying is just unbelievable. It's so much fun. It's killer. Hi, and aloha. Welcome to the beautiful island of Maui. I'm Jeff Howard, kiteboarding instructor. Thanks for joining me along with some of the world's top kiteboarders and instructors as we take you through the key steps of successfully learning to kiteboard. From some of the most basics of safety, setting up, and all the way through boosting big air. All right, let's go. Kiteboarding has taken the world by storm. Almost every stretch of water has got some brightly colored kite hovering over it. The pilots come in all shapes and sizes, all trying to master this unique sport. Some get it, and well, let's just say some don't. The purpose of this video is to help speed up the learning curve keep you safe while flying your kite, and to allow you to have the maximum amount of fun at the same time. Almost every sport has its consequences should you make a mistake, and kiteboarding is no different. By viewing this and other learning videos that are available, it will help you reduce the risks. The best thing is to obviously find a qualified instructor in your area that will take you through all the safety steps. The great thing about kiteboarding is that you really don't need that much wind or equipment when starting and for the most part is relatively easy to learn. Although easy, it can be dangerous. 
When starting, there are some obvious things to avoid. Avoid rigging up around people and always secure kite down with sand or some sort of weight. Keep clear of windsurfers and other beach users and obviously as flying kites, keep clear of trees and power lines. Kites are very powerful, but obviously the most dangerous part are the kite lines. Make sure others are around to assist you should something happen. Always be ready to lend a hand should someone need it. Don't go out any further than you want to swim in. Well, we don't want to scare you off, but just be sure to always think before you act and use common sense. The choice of what equipment to use is really a personal preference and equipment is changing on a daily basis. However, the choice you make will determine how quick you learn, so do some research before buying and consult your local dealer. There are many different types of boards on the market, with everything from light wind directional boards to the high end wake boards. It is possible to learn with either a directional or a wake board, but obviously, due to the added flotation a directional gives, we recommend this for beginners until you progress. Make sure to use a leash for your board and foot straps are a must. The best combination for learning is a bigger board and a smaller kite. There are different harnesses on the market. Find one that is comfortable and strong, and personal preference is the key here. There's a lot happening at once when you're learning, so it's recommendable to wear a water type helmet and a US Coast Guard approved life vest. There are different bars and sizes, so we recommend to simply go with the suggested kite manufacturer's bar that comes along with the kite. As you improve, you'll find a bar that will suit your riding style. As for kite lines, an average good all-around length is 30 meters. Basically, there are two types of kites that we'll discuss on this video. Namely, inflatables. These are kites with airtight bladders and single surface skins, and water relaunchable foils or ram airs, which use openings along the front edge to inflate their shape. Let's begin with inflatable kites. For this example, we'll use a Whippet of Free Air. Before starting, check which way the wind is blowing. Cross and onshore winds are the best for kite boarding. Here we have the Whippet of Free Air. You have your kite, your bar, lines, and inside your bag you should have a pump, a manual, and a repair kit. Make sure to always read your manuals completely. This can help you and assist you in times of need. Lay your kite out downwind. Fold the wingtip over and put a good amount of sand on the wing to hold the kite down. Begin by inflating the struts. These are the bladders that run from the leading edge to the trailing edge and they have two on each tip and one in the center. To begin inflating your strut, insert the pump into the valve and begin inflation. If your kite is new, you may want to squeeze it or shake it a little to straighten out the bladder inside. They can become twisted or creased. With a new kite, again, inflate a little bit more till you get a firm pressure inside the bladder. The inflation pressure can be difficult to determine, but make sure they are good and firm. If it's firm enough, once you remove the pump, the internal valve will close and make it easy for you to insert the cap. Make sure you insert the cap completely to the bottom with a good amount of pressure. Then, bring the Velcro over the top of the cap to prevent the cap from coming out. After you inflate this bladder, continue inflating all other struts on your kite. Once you have all your other struts inflated, now it's time to begin inflating your leading edge bladder. Start by removing your bridle points from the leading edge bladder valve to the center strut valve. Let's start inflating your leading edge bladder. This one will take a lot more pumps than all the other bladders, so take your time and inflate this correctly. Insert your pump and begin pumping. Once your leading edge begins to start taking shape, remember you want to pick the kite up turn it into the wind and continue pumping with the belly up. This will allow the kite to take its shape and the wing tips to fold out as they should. Again, make sure this bladder is good and stiff. This is very important to this bladder because it will keep your wing tips from folding in on each other and assist in water relaunching. This is also one of the biggest problems on the water. If your kite is not relaunching correctly, usually it's because the main bladder does not have enough air pressure. Again, if there is enough air inside and you remove your pump, the one-way valve will stop most of the air from coming out. Again, insert your valve completely, then put your Velcro over your cap. After you're finished inflating, 
Turn your kite over, nose into the wind, belly down, and put sand on the nose. This will keep the kite from flying away and allow you to get your lines ready. The first one we'll describe is a two line setup. This is a bar, you've got two lines, and your safety system. The safety system here is used to hold your lines on at many times. Now, remove your lines, take your time. You do not want these to become twisted. Slowly release them from the boom, then lay them out along the ground. Once you have your lines laid out, check the ends. The end that should be at the kite have a small knot right where the sleeving is sewn on to the ends. Now, let's get your lines attached to the kite. Remember to lay your kite out downwind. Once the kite is inflated, it's very important to put a large amount of sand or weight on the wingtip since the kite wants to kind of stand up and get flying. Now that you're ready and you have your sand on the wingtip, it's time to remove your bridle points from the bladder valve. Take a peek at them. At each end you should have a lark's head. These will be attached onto your kite lines, the corresponding side. Also, pull them out. Make sure there are no twists or tangles in the line. Now we're ready to attach the fly lines to the bridle system of the kite. Take the lark's head of the bridle and you will see it will slide behind the knot of the fly line. Tighten down. Make sure it's good and seated. This will keep it from coming apart during flying. Again, repeat the other side, attaching the lark's head behind the knot from the fly lines. Okay, we've shown you the two lines. Now let's rig this whip up for four lines and see how it performs. To begin rigging up for four lines, it is much easier to inflate your rib bladders and lay the kite out, again, downwind. If you have a no wind condition or can find a place where there's no wind, it is much better. Place the sand on the tip. This is a normal move with using whippicas or any type of kite on the beach. What we have prepared here are four what we call pigtails. They're about five to six inches long with a knot on the end. Each one of these should be the same strength as the line that your bridles are hooked to now, about 500 pounds. They are all of equal length and are ready to be tied on. To begin, you will need to unhook your bridle points from the valve in the center of your kite, walk around, and remove the whole bridle system from your kite. Once you remove the bridle system, make sure to wrap this up and store it in your bag for later use. Now that you have done so, you will notice that these are the tips that you were flying from. You have the pulleys, the end wing tip, and the trailing edge hookup point. On the bottom side of each wing tip, you will notice there are two hookup points, and then there's a Velcro patch. Simply begin by rolling up the wing tip, putting everything inside, and then Velcroing down. Now that you have finished one wing tip, do the other. The next step you will want to begin is putting the pigtails on the outer pull points for the four lining setup. Loop through, pull the knot through the loop itself, and tie on. Repeat this step to all the pull points on each wingtip. Now that you have your wingtips rolled up, your pigtails tied on, you're ready to inflate your main bladder to get started. In hooking up your lines, you will need four lines, as described in a four line setup. What we have here are four lines. I have two black and then two red. In viewing the bar, you will notice this is set up for four lines. You will see the pull point going through the center of the boom. This is a deep power ring. Some people use this, some people don't. Again, this is a personal preference. Here you have your reefing system. You can either sheet in by pulling in on the ring by hooking into your harness or do a small adjustments by reaching up, pulling down the sheeting line, and then releasing it. By pulling down this line, you can depower the kite. By simply pulling the upper line, you can power the kite back up. Now we will explain how the lines are hooked up in a four line setup of an inflatable kite. Here we have your center lines. The center lines are hooked up to the leading edge part of the kite. The outer lines are hooked to the trailing edge side of the kite to correspond to each side. You will notice here we have the red line and the red line. We will run those to the right side of the kite. When starting to lay your lines out, make sure that you start at the boom and lay them out correctly. My inside lines will hook to my leading edge. My outside lines will hook to my trailing edge, corresponding on each side. As we get down to the ends, I will lay them out. 
You will notice my inside lines are for the leading edge. Also, my outside lines. My outside lines are for the trailing edge. Now that your lines are laid out, your kite is set up and you're ready to hook your lines on. Make sure to bring your kite close enough to your lines that you have slack to hook to the downwind leg. Remember, your outside line is for your trailing edge hookup. The other line that I have set on the inside is for my leading edge on the right side. I lark's head and hook it around. Now when hooking up the downwind leg, it is very important to have enough slack. Don't be afraid to drag your boom a little to hook these lines up. The outside line is my trailing edge line. This is the trailing edge along here. This will control the kite. This is the leading edge. On the leading edge line, this one will change the angle of attack. By pulling in on this line, it will decrease the power. Letting out will increase the power. The unique thing about a four-line system is the depowering ring. You hook into the depower right before you launch the kite. This will bring the kite up into a depower mode already. Or you can simply reach out, sheet in using the sheeting line, and launch that way. This will hold it till you're ready to get going on your board. As he gets, as the equipment gets out there, I think you'll see a lot, a lot of kids doing it. Um, you know, as an accessory sport, if the wind's too much for wakeboarding. They'll, you know, throw up a kite, and do that. Um, the excitement I see in it is, is getting. You know, young kids, I've already seen down at this beach, you know, 12 or 13 year old kids doing it, which is a blessing for the sport. What about kiteboarding in age? Martin has more on this. Boy, you know what, we, we did some awesome kiting with kids today, I think ages 8 uh, up to 17. And I think as long as the kid has a little bit of weight on them and we can uh, accommodate them with the uh, correct size kite. And again, we have one square meter whippicas all the way up to 16 square meter whippicas. So uh, we can pretty much accommodate any size, you know, provided it's not too windy. first basic steps to learning how to kite board, the best thing is to pick up a good two-line sport kite or inflatable type kite just for practicing. Well, let's get started. Let's look at some simple flying positions that you will use while kiteboarding. The first position you really want to learn is the neutral position. The neutral position is pretty much straight overhead. In this position, the kite is not pulling you in any direction. From the neutral position, you'll want to drop the kite from side to side keeping total control of your kite as you do this. Bringing it over to the right slowly and then bringing it back up. The basic controlling of the kite by pulling on the right, the kite will turn to the right. Is by pulling on the left, the kite turns to the left. So keeping it on the edge, you may have to pull a little bit to either side to keep it in that position. Start controlling the kite on the sides more sporadically, up and down on the edge. This is your power stroke for going in that direction. The power zone is another thing you need to learn. The power zone is the area from which the kite flies completely to the right, completely to the left. Anything in between is the power zone for the kite. Bringing the kite back in this area, you will feel more pull. So practice doing so. The faster you move, the more power your kite can generate. Make sure when you're learning to do small moves. This will prevent the kite from overreacting and pulling too much. Every now and then your lines may become twisted. Remember, practice this time with your trainer kite and understanding how to keep control of your kite while you untwist your lines by spinning your body, not by spinning the kite. Make sure to practice your release system for emergencies. You should understand how your system works. Let go of the kite, 
reel your bar back in, and relaunch the kite. Do this over and over. You can never spend enough time with small kites. When learning, it's much safer to use a kite to drag you through the water. This is called body dragging. Use the kite, flying side to side, to pull you through the water, learning control and learning the power of the kite. If possible, it's much better to have an experienced kiteboarding instructor or a good kite flyer to help you out when learning the body drag. When dragging, be careful of submerged obstacles and be sure that you keep in deep water. Make sure to fasten your safety leash before launching of your kite. Once your kite is launched and there is power in the kite, things can get really complicated. The first launch that we will explain is an assisted launch. It is much easier and much better to use someone to help you out, but make sure that these people are knowledgeable with kites. Have your assistant hold the kite by the leading edge bladder, belly up, until you are ready. Once you get your lines rolled out and you're at the end, make sure that your leaders are off and attached correctly. Check your safety system. You want these all running correctly through the boom. Start by launching your kite on the edge of the wind window. This is the safest position to launch your kite. Once you're ready, make sure you have your life jacket and a harness. These are all personal preference. Now you're ready to launch the kite. Again, check your safety system. Safety is the main key here. Securely fasten your wrist leash. Make sure this is good and attached. When the kite goes down, you can get very strong pulls on this system, and you do not want it to slip off. Now that you're ready to launch, give your helper the thumbs up, and you're ready to go. Pulling back on the boom will get the kite into flying position. Then, slowly fly the kite from the ground up into the neutral position. Make sure all your equipment is equal, your kite is flying straight with the boom straight, and all your safety system is attached correctly. Once the kite is in the air, you want to bring it up to the center, to the neutral position. This is called the neutral zone. This is where you like to sit with the kite and make sure you have good control of it. If you're helping someone or they're helping you, they should always hold the kite by the bladder and release the kite gently. Do not throw the kite into the air as you do not want the kite to jump or go back into the ground when launching. Once again, using the signal thumbs up means that you are ready to launch your kite. Once you pull back on your lines, your helper should simply release the kite, slowly bring the kite up to the neutral position. This is called the neutral zone. This is where you like to sit with the kite and make sure you have good control of it. Now that the kite is in the neutral zone, hook into your harness. Take the load off your arms. Then, check everything. Make sure you feel comfortable with all your gear the way it's working. Now, turning the kite from left to right. If you pull right, the kite will turn right. If you pull left, the kite will turn left. Remember, by pulling right on the boom, the kite will turn right. By pulling left, the kite will turn left. This is by very small increments. You don't want to do big moves with the control bar unless you are ready for a lot of power. This can make the kite dive into the power zone and create a lot of pull. If when launching the kite does not rise but tends to drift downwind, it's more than likely positioned too far upwind. In this case, relaunch your kite so that it is slightly more downwind. If the opposite occurs and the kite rises too quickly and with too much power, it was more than likely launched too far downwind in relation to your position. If this happens, try to get your kite into the neutral position and regain control. If there is no one around, you may have to do an unassisted or self-launch as we call it. To begin the self-launching, walk your kite to the edge of the window or to the launch position. Lay your kite down so that it lays in the downwind position. Again, apply sand to the wingtip. Take your time laying your lines out. Put on your safety system. Make sure your leash is on snug and tight and that everything is okay. And self-launching is very important to keep your lines slack. As you begin to pull back, the kite will want to fly and this process happens very quickly. As the kite begins to launch, the sand will slowly pop off of the tip and the kite will begin to fly. Slowly fly the kite up to the neutral position over your head. Let's see what the kite is doing during the self-launch. 
Once the tension is gained on the up wing tip, the kite will gradually fill with air and then pop the sand off the tip and begin flying. Once your kite is launched and in the flying position, slowly bring it up to the neutral position over your head. Make sure to practice your release system for emergencies. You should understand how your system works. Here we will demonstrate a simple safety release system of the re-ride bar. Once the bar has been released, it will slide out to the stop knot and stop. This will allow the kite to flatten out and depower. Practicing assisted landing on the beach. Remember, using your signals, thumb down, means to your helper that you want to bring the kite down. Slowly bring the kite down on the edge, not fast. Once he grabs control, walk toward your helper, and the helper should walk towards you. This relaxes all pressure of the bridles and will bring the kite down swiftly. Once the kite is down to your helper, the helper should swiftly grab the leading edge of the kite and walk toward the flyer. Your helper should never grab any of the bridles of the kite. This can easily repower the kite. Once again, remember to use hand signals. Signal to your helper, thumbs down, means you want to bring the kite down. Slowly fly the kite down to your helper. Once your helper has gained control of the kite, you should quickly walk towards your helper and your helper towards you. After you've rolled your lines up, take the kite from your helper. Remember to lay the nose into the wind, face down, and putting sand on the leading edge to keep it from flying away. Take your leash off. Wrap it around your bar to secure your lines to your bar so that they will not get tangled. If no helper is available on the shore when you're ready to come in, slowly steer your kite down along the edge of the wind window and always keep a 40 meter buffer zone. As the kite is slowly brought down into the water, grab hold of your downward line and pull yourself towards the kite. When pulling in, keep loose lines completely clear of you. Grab hold of the leading edge and swim to the shore. Get to the beach, drop the nose into the wind, and set the sand on the leading edge. This will keep the kite from flying away. At many times, the beach can get busy. Carrying your kite back is a simple thing to do. Hold the kite belly up on the leading edge and walk back safely. In some areas, it may be unsafe or be a restricted area to lay out a set of lines. Here, we use a real bar. A typical reel type bar has a reel and a braking system. The braking system stops the lines from going out until you're ready. Once you release off of the brake, the lines will slide out. And to stop the lines, you pull the trigger in. Once you want to bring your kite in, you need to bring your kite down to the ground, turn it over, and then reel your lines in. Rolling up your system, on a four line you have more lines, so remember, take your time and get these lines wrapped up correctly so that they won't fall apart in your bag and it'll be easier to pull out next time you're ready to go. There are two ways in putting away your kite. One is partially and one is completely. To partially roll up your kite, begin by deflating the leading edge bladder. Then, roll the kite from wingtip to the center and then the other wingtip to the center. Secondly, to bring the kite completely down, you want to deflate all of the ribs and the leading edge. Begin by folding the wingtips inwards, about the width of the bag. Pull in one side and then the other. Turn the kite and try to roll from the trailing edge toward the leading edge. This will allow the air to escape out of the ribs and out of the bladders and be ready to stow away. Another one of the tools used in kite boarding today are Ram Air Foils. This is the Mosquito Pro from Wind Tools. Let's go rig this up and see what they've got. Getting started with a foil, by pulling the kite out of the bag, just like you would any, make sure you lay the kite downwind, putting sand on the wingtips. 
On the Mosquito, this is what we call a partial inflatable and a foil kite. Kind of a, a hybrid, as we would say. We get by pulling out the valves, pulling out the plugs, and inserting a pump. You can either blow it up or use a pump to inflate the bladders inside the kite. Checking the pressure once in a while as you inflate it is very important. Give it a few pumps, check the pressure. You don't want this bulging out the fabric. You want it to lay smooth. Now that you are finished, take the cap, insert into the hose to stop all the air, undo your zipper, and place the valve inside. Notice that we do not have them pumped up very tightly. All Ram Airs has some sort of valving system to allow the air to go inside of the kite to inflate the shape and also to stop the air from escaping to increase its water relaunchability. The Mosquito has a very unique system. It uses a rubber or a literal condom inside of the kite. Since these are literal condoms, sometimes the UV will get to them. Make sure to not lay your kite in the sunshine for very long with the intakes upwards. Once you have your bladders inflated to the right correct pressure, you need to clear the valves. By simply blowing into them, it will straighten them out so the air can enter the kite. Now that your kite is fully inflated, your valves are ready to intake air, you want to get your bridle system ready. The Mosquito we have set up as a three-line system. We have a left and we have a right. The brakes are also attached to the mains. They are not used in flying. The safety system of the Mosquito is very unique. It will pull in on the center part of the bridle and collapse it. Now that you are ready to attach to your lines, grab your kite with bridles in hand and walk to your launch site. As with any other kite, you want to lay your kite downwind and apply sand to the wing tip to keep the kite down. It doesn't take as much as the inflatables do. With the kite laid out, you're ready to attach your lines. The outside lines of a mosquito are used for the turning. This is attached to the main bridle system. The center line is attached for depowering the kite. Take the lark's head of the bridle and you will see it will slide behind the knot of the fly line. Tighten down. Make sure it's good and seated. Sometimes launching a ram air foil can be difficult. Take your time inflating the kite. Since the air only comes through the valving system, it does take a little bit longer to inflate. Give it time and once it inflates, it will begin to fly. Your assistant needs to understand the way the kite flies. So by holding onto the leading edge, not the trailing edge, so he can stay out of the bridle system, he will hang on to it until you are ready to fly the kite. Note that the center line is slack. This line is not used until you are ready. By either hooking into it, you can depower the kite a little, or it's mainly there for the safety setup. In reasonably steady winds, a good foil is easy to control. They can also generate a lot of power, so be aware of this. The Mosquito has a very unique system to depowering the kite. By pulling in on the center of the kite, the wingtips will flap and bring the kite down. To relaunch the Mosquito, it's much better to either swim backwards, pulling on the bar, or swim forwards to allow the kite to roll over and relaunch itself from the water. It in bringing down a foil, it's also important to grab the wing tip and walk directly toward the flyer. Staying out of the bridles is the very important part here. To self-launch a foil, you need to set the kite slightly off wind, not straight down wind, of the window and put sand all along the trailing edge. As you gradually pull back on the kite, hold the nose up into the wind. Don't pull enough to launch. Let the kite inflate a little bit. Once the kite is slowly inflated, then you're ready to launch. Slowly fly the kite to the edge of the wind window. At this area, there is not as much pull. In bringing down a foil, it's also important to grab the wing tip and walk directly toward the flyer. Staying out of the bridles is the very important part here. In an unpopulated area, and you want to bring down your kite, simply lower the kite down to the beach, then pull your safety system with the center. This will depower the kite and make it lay down on the beach. Then, begin rolling your lines up. Okay, here we have the new wave by Concept Air. We're going to get this rolled out again laying the kite downwind, putting sand on the wing tip. Notice, the bridle systems may be intimidating on some foils, but don't let this bother you. By simply shaking, you can usually get all the knots out. 
It's a good idea to attach the knots and the main hookup point to one bridle line at the leading edge of the kite. This will decrease the amount of knots and tangles that you have in your bridles. Now that you have your lines pulled out, check them to make sure that they're separated. The mains on the right and mains on the left. Here on the Concept Air, they have an opening at the trailing edge of the kite. This will allow you to clean out any water or any sand up inside of the kite. Also on the leading edge of the kite, the hookup points. These points take a lot of the main load. Also, there's a valving system where the air comes into the kite. Again, the air goes in, but it closes off so the air cannot come back out. It may look difficult, but it's not as hard as you think. By loosening the lines up, usually your tangles will come right out. Now that we're ready to fly, we're going to roll our lines out and check those. Once our lines are rolled out, securing on the safety leash, I think we're ready to do a launch. Check and make sure that everything is knotted down correctly. This is the first time we've flown this kite. We want to make sure everything is hooked up right. For launching the kite, again, with all foils, slightly pull on the nose. This will allow air to go inside of the valves and slowly inflate the kite. As the sand falls off the wingtip, pump the kite a little bit, in and out, shake from left to right. You will notice the wingtips will fill up with air and stop moving. Another unique feature that is not used on any foil kite now is a Concept Air's depowering and powering system. It's opposite than the inflatables. By pulling in on the line, you power the kite. By letting out, you depower the kite. Let's take a break and see some action that you can learn from watching these videos. The machine is now in recording. To me, kite surfing is everything. I really find it as a way to go out in the water and have a good time, Just catch some big airs, do radical tricks, ride waves. Take a look at this. Cut. Cut again. And see through my eyes what it is to truly be free. Check it out. We're really defining the meaning of big air for water sports with kite surfing. And as the equipment is getting better and better, and the, the boards, the kites, the equipment's getting safer and easier, we're catching bigger and bigger airs.
Okay, we're back. Let's get back to basics so you can learn how to do some of that action. First thing, check the winds. Cross shore and onshore breezes are the most desirable winds for kiteboarding. The next point you want to practice is getting in and out of your harness with your power kite. Try to practice flying the kite without looking at it as much. This will allow you to concentrate more time on your board riding and not your kite. It should become second nature. Slowly feel the kite from left to right. This is called flying blind. The next step is to get your board and place it close to the water. Remember, undo your leash, make sure everything is untangled and attached correctly. You do not want to lose your board while out in the water. Once you launch your kite and you're ready to get going, walk out to your board. You can put your leash on alone, but again, the buddy system works very well. If you have a friend, ask them to attach your leash on. It is much safer. Keep control of your kite, grab your foot strap, and carry your board out into the water. By flying the kite out toward the water, it will help you and assist you in getting started. Another good point to learn is that if you have the area to launch your kite with you in the water, it is much safer. Whereas if you get drugged, you're in the water and not on the land. Once you gain control of your kite, relax and get hooked back in. Once you're in the water and you have good control of your kite, up in the neutral position, grab your leash from your ankle, pull your board to you, slowly put your feet into the board and begin slightly dragging with the board. Get ready, unhook from your harness and dive the kite into position. Notice, point your nose toward the kite slightly. Here are some key points from a different angle. Grab your leash with your kite stabilized, bring your board to you, taking your time to feel relaxed and in control of the kite. Slip in your back foot, bringing your front foot up, staying away from the leash, don't get tangled. Unhook your bar, be ready, then drop your kite into the power, pointing your nose toward the kite, and gain speed. Make sure you get the board on the plane before you begin leaning back. Then, hook back into your harness and you're ready to sail. Here are some common mistakes. When getting started, make sure to point your nose of the board toward the kite when getting up. This will prevent you from going over the top of the board when you get started. Here's an example of how not to get started. He's looking at the kite the whole time and not watching what he's doing sporadically moving the boom and getting off balance. As a kite begins to fly, avoid pulling the kite up too fast as this will generate too much power. If your feet are in the board, position the bar toward the tail or toward the nose will keep you straight in getting started. Remember, if the nose goes downwind, push the bar toward the tail. That will bring the tail back downwind. Keeping this in control and practicing it will help you out a lot in getting started. We want to show you what the kite's doing in this position. By diving the kite from the top of the neutral position, down slightly in the direction you want to head, it will gradually pull you up. Take your time, flying it up and down to generate what you need and keep the speed on your board to stay on a plane. Notice the flying position of the kite, slightly up and down along the edge of the wind window, supplying power to go forward in the direction we want to head. Let's take a look at the same steps from a different angle. Keeping your kite in the center of the wind window until you're ready, dropping the kite down into the power to generate enough lift for you to get up on the board. As you get up, keep the kite moving on the wind window on the edge in the forward position of which you want to go. This will help you gain speed. Eventually, you're going to crash and your lines are going to get twisted. Remember, apply the simple processes that you learned in flying the little stunt kite. Get your kite overhead, get good control, and untwist your lines until they come completely out and you're ready to go again. The safety system is there for a reason. If you wipe out and you have to release, that's what it's there for. Take your time and relax. Allow the kite to fall back down to the water, flattened out. Then, pull on your safety line. Bring your arm back to you. 
It relaxed, makes sure the line is not tangled around you, and feeds itself through the bar. But be prepared, the kite can relaunch and explode and pull very hard. Be aware of this. Bring the kite back over the center, relax, get your twists out, and get started again. Relaunching your kite. Sometimes a kite can be difficult to relaunch. Understanding your kite and spending time with your kite and how it relaunches is very important. Most inflatable kites will tend to work their way to the edge of the power zone and start to take off. Another good point for inflatables is to remember, if the kite is collapsed from wingtip to wingtip and flat on the water, remember to swim toward the kite. Allow the kite to roll itself back without you pulling against the bridles. It can usually roll itself into a launching position. Eventually, the wind will roll the kite over off of its nose and begin relaunching. Be ready for the power boost. Simply hold on and work the kite directly above you back into the neutral position. Going upwind in kite boarding is one of the first basic steps that everybody wants to learn. Sometimes it can be very difficult. The big point of learning this is learning control and speed of your kite and speed of which you are riding. By lowering the kite down, the lower it is, the more force you can gain against the kite. If you get overpowered or you're in an overpowered situation where your speed is going too fast and you're skipping only across the top of the water, bring your kite back up to neutral position, lean back, slow your speed back down. The main thing is to learn the speed of which you want to ride and you can handle the edge of the board in the water. There's quite the different riding style between kite surfing and windsurfing. Windsurfers ride the fin. Kiteboarders must ride the rail. In kiteboarding, if you can't keep your rail in, it's much harder to stay upwind. If you begin to get overpowered, remember, lowering the kite sometimes closer to the water, this decreases the amount of pull upwards that the kite can gain on you. Lowering it down, you gain more leverage against the kite and can keep your edge of your board into the water. Keeping your kite at about a 45 degree angle is a good position for an upwind ability. Maintain this. If you begin to gain too much speed, again in the overpowering position, bring the kite back up to neutral and slow yourself back down. There are some real fancy ways of turning to redirect your board. But before we go there, let's start with two of the more common jibes. The switch and jibe, then the jibe and switch. The first jibe we will explain here is the switch and then jibe. To begin this, you need to relax the pressure off the edge of the board, unhook your harness, then remove your back foot and slide it into the front foot strap. At this time, you will be riding with both feet in the front straps. Then, remove your old front foot and place it in front of the back strap. Add weight to your back leg, a little force into the tail, and lean into your turn. Keep your knees bent throughout the jibe. This will help you to become more stable in your turning. Now that you have finished your turn, take your back foot and place it into the back strap. Okay, let's take a look at the switch and jibe from a different angle. Unhook your harness. Pull out your back foot and place in the forward foot strap. At this point, you're riding both feet. Remove your old front foot, place it on the back of the board in front of the back foot strap. Lean onto the tail and into the turn. Remember, keeping your knees bent is very important in the turning process. Hook back into the harness, then slip your back foot back into the back foot strap. One of the hardest parts about this jibe is riding at speeds with both feet in the front of the foot straps. You either put too much weight too far forward or too much weight too far backwards. What's your kite doing in the position of doing your jibes? Well, for the switch and jibe, you want to maintain your speed while you're switching your first steps of it. So keep the kite slightly in the direction you're headed. Then, once you start to do your switch and your turn, bring the kite up to center and then back down to the other direction you're wanting to head. Here are the key points for the switch and then jibe. Relax off the edge, remove your back foot, put into the front foot strap, then remove your old front foot, place it on the tail of the board, and push your way into the turn. Once you're relaxed, 
Take your back foot, place it back into the back strap, and hook back into your harness. This jibe is the jibe and then switch. Remember, unhook from your harness, take your back foot out, place it onto the forward part of the board, lean forward into the turn. Once your turn is complete, you will hit a neutral position with your kite straight overhead, then bring your back foot forward to the front strap, then switch your old front foot to the back. Once you feel comfortable, hook into your harness and then slip your back foot in. Here are the key points for a successful jive and switch. Unhook, take your back foot out on the forward part of the board, lean into the turn, then once you're in the neutral position, head it in the other direction, switch your feet. Bring your back foot forward, your front foot back, and you're ready to go. As you get better and you learn the techniques of kiteboarding, one of the neatest and unique things is jumping. There are different ways of jumping. You can either jump by using the kite, or you can jump by simply hitting a wave, or the two in combination. Start by doing small hops. Turn into the wave a little, and then pull it back in. Continue doing this, keeping your kite in about the 45 degree or almost in the neutral position. And just keep playing with this. The next step is to bring your kite back past the neutral position slightly behind you and then back forward after you jump. When popping for a jump, Make sure to keep your nose of the board upwards. You don't want to dig your nose in on a landing. Try to keep your knees bent and your weight to the back of the board. Make sure to avoid big moves with the kite unless you are ready to really launch. Take your time positioning the kite slightly or flying it slowly from left to right. You can see how much power can be generated with the kite. Remember that upon landing, you want to bring the kite back into forward position so you can stay in the forward motion. Before jumping, make sure that your feet are securely in the foot straps and that you bend your knees to absorb all the pressure and the pull. As your jumps get higher, you'll need to keep your eyes down for the landing. Remember, keep those knees bent. You don't want to land with stiff legs. All right, let's go see some of the advice the pros can give us. I'm constantly steering actually. Uh, so as I approach the jump, I'm steering the kite up and then about two seconds into the jump, uh, after liftoff, I start bringing the kite forward again. If I go really high, I wait a little bit and then start bringing the kite forward later. Um, you generally want to end up on the apex of your jump with the kite pretty much above your head. If you Tuck, you have better control and balance in the air. Yeah? If you straighten out in the air, you usually stop spinning or uh, things can go wrong easier. It's easy to go up, but um, coming down, if you're not in control, it hurts. <laughs> Best thing in kiteboarding, I don't know yet because everything that I do, I like. So I like wave riding, it's one of the best, and uh, I jump for sure. Just have to try and try, have a little bit of uh, Spend time on the maneuver because uh, it's going to be fun uh, once you start to jump. <laughs>